everybody, ba -ba -da -da, Banjo Ben here at BanjoBenClark.com. Today we're going to learn about something that a lot of people ask about, and that's blues notes. Blues notes on the banjo. A lot of the cool licks that we hear out there have blues notes sprinkled all over them, just like that lick that I played there. And so there are some very specific blues notes that deal with the key of G, which is what we play out of a lot of times on the banjo. So today we're going to talk about what are blues notes? Where do they come from? How do you find them? And are they really blue? Well, okay, they're not blue. I'll go ahead and tell you that one. After we uh, explain that, we're going to dive into some blues licks. This is kind of my banjo bluesy bag of licks. It's almost too many bees in there. Banjo Ben's bluesy banjo bag of licks. And uh, then we are going to teach those to you some really cool licks. <laughs> where we learn all those cool little blues notes. All right, here we go. I'd like to give you an overview of the licks that we're going to work on today and then I'm gonna show you how to play. And you're gonna be able to hear the blues notes sprinkled throughout these licks. And then we're going to dive into a really in-depth explanation of what blues notes are. And um, then I'll slow all these licks down for you, put it on split screen and really get into them. Uh, but today we're gonna to learn five uh, pretty basic, fairly common blues notes um, or licks in G. Then we're going to learn one in C and one in D. And then we're going to learn kind of an extra little fancy G bluesy lick. It's a little more difficult. Um, so when you go to my website to get the tabs for this lesson, if you're a Silver Pick member, which is a free membership on my site, you're able to purchase this tab. And in that tab, We'll include all these licks that we're going to cover today, including that intro lick that I play, the, that thing, that's a pretty cool lick. That's in that tab as well. Uh, if you're a Gold Pick member on my site, of course, your membership includes all of those tabs, um, so that will be there. Also, Gold Pick members will get to watch uh, the remainder of the videos in this lesson series um, with all the close-ups of the licks and everything. So if you're interested in continuing that, just go to my Website, BanjoBenClark.com, and become a Gold Pick member. All right, the first lick that we're going to learn today sounds like this. Pretty cool, huh? Next one's kind of a little melodic type blues. Lick. Then we're going to learn one that's kind of melodic. It's got some syncopation in it. Cool. Then we're going to learn a kind of a slower one that can be used in your backup a lot. That's a cool lick because it's a closed lick so you can move it around all over the fingerboard. Pretty cool. Then we are going to learn a chromatic or truly, truly chromatic lick. Sounds like this. That sounds pretty cool fast. All right. Then we're going to learn a blue C lick. Sounds like this. That's a good one. It's one of my favorites. I play it all the time, especially in my backup. We'll learn a bluesy kind of single string style D lick. I love that one. It's kind of like Tony Rice on the banjo. Good stuff. And then we'll wrap it up by learning this really fancy one. If I can play it. There it is. So those are the licks we're going to cover today. Those are blues notes are sprinkled all over. Let's talk about what blues notes are. Sometimes the best way to figure out what something is is to first identify what it's not. And I'm here today to tell you what, a blues, what blues notes are not. And they are not part of the major scale. Now, do you know what a major scale is? Well, if you don't, I have an answer for you. I've created a video. I put it up a few weeks back. It's called Essential Theory that every picker should know and I'm gonna put a link to it right here look at that a magic all in the point of a finger if you're watching this video on YouTube then I invite you to click on that it's gonna take you to that video then you'll have to come back and rejoin this video but essentially in that video I give you a very detailed explanation of what a major scale is the very um, specific pattern of intervals that a major scale has and you'll need that basic understanding before you can continue on but assuming that you have that understanding, let's dive into what are our blues notes and how we find them. Now we see here on the board that a major scale has seven tones, as you know, starts out on the root, 
goes through the seven tones that would be our do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, then ending one octave above our original root there. Now, you would also know, based on the video, that we have specific intervals between each one of these tones. No matter where we start the major scale, all major scales have those intervals. A whole step, a whole step, a half, whole, 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 half. Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. If you take that pattern anywhere on the fretboard or piano and you play a whole step, a whole step, then a half, three more holes than a half, you will end up with a major scale. Now today we're dealing primarily with the G major scale. So what I've done is drawn out the notes that are in a G major scale beneath the tone that corresponds. So here we start out with our G, which is the root. G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, falsetto G. Now, now we know that our major tones, what they are. So now we have to figure out where are our blues notes. Well, blues notes are essentially some of the notes that we skip over as we're playing our major scale. Remember, when we're playing our major scale, there are times that we'll skip a fret. Well, when we skip that fret, we're skipping over blues tones. But there's really three blues tones that are used very commonly in commercial music, in bluegrass, in blues, in country. And those are the three that we're going to concentrate on today. Those are the flat third, the flat fifth, and the flat seventh. Let's talk about where we can find this. A flat third, what does that name imply? That name implies that it has to do with the third tone, right? So where's our third tone of the G major scale? One, two, three. There's our third tone. Well, we're looking for a flat third. Now we see here that there is a one whole step interval between the second and third tones. And we talked about that that meant that we had skipped a fret or we had skipped a little piano key to get from the second to third tone. That one that we skipped lives right in the middle of the second and third tone. That is the flat third tone. Now, in Nashville, we refer to it as the flat three. We talk in terms of numbers. However, the technical note name for that would be a B flat. Good deal, that's a very common one. Matter of fact, that's the the third tone that's used in a minor chord. Whenever we want to play a minor chord, we would play a G, a B flat, and a D, versus a major chord where you would just play the B. All right, now let's talk about our flat fifth because that's one that we're going to wear out pretty good as well. We have our first, second, third, fourth, and fifth tone is a D note. And sure enough, you look up here and there is a whole step in between the fourth and fifth or the C and D note. So we can grab that blues note there, which lives right in the middle of those guys. That would be our flat fifth. I have to deal with my handwriting here. And also referred to as a D flat in this instance, since we're in the key of G. Now, what was the last one that I mentioned? Well, a flat seven. This is also one that we're going to wear out quite frequently. And we have an F sharp as our seventh tone. There was one whole step in between the sixth and seventh tone. That means that there is some kind of note living there in between them. And that would be the flat seventh. Now, what would it be called? Previously, we had a B, so we'd say as a B flat. We had a D, we'd say as a D flat. But here we have an F sharp. What does F sharp mean? A sharp means that you've raised the tone a half step. A flat means, as you can tell, because we've already done it, that you've lowered the tone a half step. So in the G major scale, we have an F sharp. That is the seventh tone of the scale. So if we want to flatten an F sharp, we do not call it an F flat because it is sharped. So what we do to flatten it is simply erase the sharp so that our flat seven is just an F note. So our three blues notes that we're really going to talk about today and that are in these licks, sprinkled all over these licks, are our B flat, D flat, and F, or in Nashville we'd say, if because we often play songs in all kinds of different keys, we'd say a flat three, a flat five, or a flat seven. And we'll talk about how um, we're going to get all those notes and also how we're going to use them in these licks that we're going to play. 
If you're watching this video at banjobenclark.com, I encourage you to go over to the, click on the Banjo Tabs button and then print off uh, this Banjo Blues Bag of Licks tab because we're going to be referring to it measure by measure as we go through it. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, you're about to be redirected to my website, banjobenclark.com, where you can become a Gold Pick member and see the rest of this video lesson as well as many others and have access to all of my tabs. Now, most of these licks um, are taking place in one measure, and so it's kind of a little add-on. It's essentially, truly, a bag of licks. This very first one is the same amount of time that we have our normal G lick in. Okay, so we have um, one measure lick. So what a lot of these are used for, or good for, is whenever we want to substitute one of these in for maybe another standard lick that we have. Instead of doing that G lick, sometimes I can do something like the blues G lick number one. Cool. Now as we look at that lick, um, it's considered really a melodic lick. We're using a melodic uh, position. And we're going to start out with a quarter note with our thumb on that G note, on that G string. And then we are going to place our index finger on the third fret here of the D string, our ring on the fifth fret of the B string. And with our right hand, you'll look there, I have all the uh, pick, right hand pick markings beneath the notes. We're going to play it with our middle and then our thumb. play an open D string and then this is going to be a very common theme on the ends of lots of these licks we're going to have a little choke it sounds like this okay so what I'm doing you'll see there on the tab it says one quarter and little bitty numbers above the number three that just means that I'm bending it a quarter um, step now we know that our frets are in half steps we talked about that earlier so if I want to bend a quarter step, it's about half the sound that I would get um, if I were to move up one fret. So here's the third fret. Here's the fourth fret. So we need to bend this just kind of in between those two notes. Just a little bit. Can you play that lick along with me? So we're going to bend it as we play that open D string with our middle finger. That's blues jig, uh, G lick number one. Let's move on to blues G lick number two. <laughs> 